and welcome to a new video and this time we're going to talk about indoor navigation with MetaQuest and the MetaQuest Pass-Through API using the Quest Camera Kit and as you can see in the video we're already walking through our environment and using a QR code to identify the source where we want to go. In this case, my coffee machine, which is a little bit offset because I was sloppy when placing the target, but after all, that's more or less working. So first of all, to get started, we gonna check out the Quest Camera Kit. I already opened the GitHub repository. Let me make the view a little bit better for you to read. So this is the Quest Cam Camera Kit by XR Dev Rob, we, who already added quite some samples to show the functionality of the Quest pass-through cameras. And we're going to use the QR code tracking with Zebra Crossing. For anyone following the channel a little bit longer, you may notice that there is a WebRTC video streaming that was contributed by us. And we already did a QR code reading with Zebra Crossing quite a while ago, but this is using a way simpler approach. So even people who are not that good in programming can use that. So first of all, check out the Quest Camera Kit and do the setup as it's described down here. QR code tracking, install NuGet for Unity. So this is also very easy. Open the package manager and paste the Git link for NuGet. Here is install as Git dependency via package manager. Insert this link, I'll just show you real quick. Window, package manager, go to the plus, install package from Git URL, paste it, and then you will have the NuGet for Unity package. And a new menu, which you can find here in NuGet. And when you then switch to manage NuGet packages, then enter zebra crossing z sing and go to search. Install the set zebra crossing.net by Michael Jan. As you can see, I already installed the version 0.16.10. And everybody is everything is set up. There may be a chance that this is not working as you expected. So you can always check under edit project settings player. And then under other settings, if the scripting defined symbol here is active, the zebra crossing enabled, if that's not the case, go to tools and click on update zebra crossing defined symbol. So everything should be set up to use zebra crossing as QR code tracker. On the other hand, switch to Android as build platform, everything like you're used to, and for first testing, you can open the QR code tracking sample scene, which has a QR code scanner and a marker, which will be spawned whenever you scan a QR code. I more or less duplicate the scene, dropped in my scanned environment, and modified everything a little bit we will walk i will walk you through all that but first of all let's have a look how we can create our environment here and there are multiple steps to do this or multiple ways to do this and the first one is to use the good old measurement tape using the measurement tape maybe having some kind of construction plan or architecture and then build up blocks like this one where the measurements are exactly like in your real environment and then have a point where you can spawn your building and use that as a reference. Another way to do it would be using the Quest room scanning as there are now multiple rooms allowed. And I'll show you that in a video too. Um, you can use this model that's already on your Quest to generate this geometry here and it's fairly simple. After you ha have done your room setup, um, please note for bigger spaces that the maximum supported area by now is 200 square meters. So if your 
environment is bigger than, the, than this, you will have to do this multiple times. But after you succeed at scanning and everything is set up, like the walls, the doors, the windows, and so on, you can go to the needle engine site, which is called needle XR mesh tracking, mesh detection. And this will show you a model of your environment. Um, the preview model is not your real environment. So you, after scanning, you have to click on enter AR. And when you entered AR after a second or so, you will see your grid, your colorful grid, which shows exactly your scanned room. There may be some kind of differences in fluid, but it doesn't matter for now for, for us. And to extract this model, just go back to the menu and click on download as GLB. And as you see here, the model will be downloaded on your quest and you can use that GLB in your Unity project to get access to your room data. And for that, you will have to install another package, which is called Unity GLT Fast. And to install that, you can just go to the package manager, go to the plus button, I'll just show you real quick, package manager plus button, install package by name, and then come Unity cloud um, dot glt fast and this will add the glt fast package to your project to easy import glb and gltf files the links are as always in the description box and as we we're talking about projects and something else i just wanted to mention that we started another project and this other project is our patreon page and this patreon page is live now together with our friends from Wave Labs. You can now become a patron of Fire Dragon Game Studio and Wave Labs if you like what we do, and you will even get a small present. You will get our Unity asset, the sensor camera asset, which is for sale at the Unity asset store for around 13 euros 79. If you're using Patreon, we would really, really appreciate it if you become a patron for, for Fire Dragon Game Studio and Wave Labs. And Stay tuned, there will be more things coming up, especially on the Patreon side for providing extra things to make it valuable to become a member. And if you don't want to invest so much money, you can still become a YouTube member here and quick shout out to all the YouTube members which are currently supporting the channel. Thank you for, for your support. But now back to the project. So after we downloaded the GLP from our quest. I'll just show you real quick here how this looks. We can just drag and drop it down here. And as you can see, whoops, we put it here. This is the scanned room model, and this already looks pretty good. I just removed all the furniture and all the extra geometry, which is not needed, and also the occlusion material stuff because we won't need them to so this unit is occlusion and after everything is sorted out we will have something like this which is more or less the raw model and i added a plane for the floor just a unity plane and to make it navigation navigatable to make it available for navigation i just added the nav mesh surface component here all the settings are the default settings and if you go to window ai navigation you can always set up the agent i just made a very thin agent um, adapted the step pattern the max slope so that i can just bake this mesh here and make it possible for the agent to navigate over this floor and the walls are just set here to prevent the navigation line from going through the wall. So you should have some kind of proper guidance here. For everything that's in um, detectable by the depth sensor, of the crest should occlude basically the custom geometry. So I just enabled the depth, the scene depth, and the pass-through support and made this app 
boundary less so I can walk around without always having to set my boundary. And you can do this by modifying the manifest here in the plugins folder and right there is the Android manifest. And you can see here that there is this permission for boundary less app, which will help us to move without boundaries. Now that we have our model and we have navigation, it's time for a navigation line. So just use the line render here, set the width to 10 centimeters, give it a simple material. This is an occluder material from the meta repository. I made it blue and this can be occluded by, for instance, my hands or other geometry. So it will have a more natural look. Then I set up everything, the geometry, gave it a small rotation offset to align with the QR code later on. I have my floor here and my other geometry. And then I added two things. First of all, the navigation targets with is in this case, my coffee machine. This is where the navigation line should point to and some kind of recenter possibility. This would be the main entrance here to recenter everything as soon as the geometry starts drifting or even if I have to switch floors. So that's basically all under the start marker objects. There's my whole geometry. I have a few debug objects just to um, test the functionality, but the real magic happens here at the QR code scanner. There is the QR code display manager. This is the script that's already part of the Quest camera kit, but I added a small change here on line 104. I just disabled everything that handles markers because I don't need anything with the markers directly. With the marker pooling, I don't need that. I just wrote the class called Indo Navigation Reference it here, and every time I find a QR code, I'll just share the result text, the center position, and the post rotation of this QR code with my in the navigation logic. And even that, although the class is a little bit long, it's fairly simple. With the camera object, the start position object, my line render for the navigation line, and all navigation targets and recenter targets that I add, and a few debugging stuff, debugging flags, which are not really needed. For instance, the room alignment active, where I can switch off the room alignment with the start gesture or the start button of the controller and a few other variables to cache navigation and recenter points as well as rotation and position offsets. Furthermore, we need a nav mesh surface, a nav mesh path and the navigation target for the navigation part. And just initializing everything, I'll make this a little bit bigger for you and just close this one here. So we have a start method where the nav mesh path is created and I get my nav mesh surface, which is the floor surface here. Initially, I would disable everything from the start position object. It doesn't matter here. So I just commented it out. All the navigation recenter targets are added here to the respective dictionary. So these are just variables in the Unity editor. You can see them here, targets. We send the targets, so navigation targets, we send the targets. And the basic idea is that this will just be set up in the 3D geometry and everything will be added here and it will be available for navigation or recentering. So in the update method, just switching on and off the room alignment, this is for debugging purposes, like checking if the QR code detection works, if the navigation works. And this is part where the magic for the navigation happens. So it checks if the start position is active, if there is a navigation target and we found a nav mesh surface. So the nav mesh will calculate the path. And if this path is complete, so we can find a path from our, in this case, camera to the target object, we will set up the line renderer Otherwise, the line renderer will have no data and will not be displayed. And as we saw before, the found QR code method takes the QR code result, position and rotation, does all the debug stuff, resets our navigation target zero if 
in case we will find a new one or we will just scan another QR code to switch from the navigation part, for instance, to the recenter part. And if the navigation contains a key which matches, which matches the result, we will set the new navigation target so that the navigation line will point to this new target. Check if the room alignment is active. If not, just return because we don't want anything to resend the auto room align. And check the QR code result if it's start here. So the reason why the space is written with like in the URL here is because the QR code program are used for creating a QR code streets text as URLs. So if we found the start, we will enable our start position object and set it where the marker is. So I just created my own small rotation because the MetaQuest already knows where X and Z rotation is and where the surfaces are. So we don't have to rotate in this direction, only around the Y axis to properly place our geometry on the starting QR code and place it here on the position. If the recenter dictionary contains our QR code result, we will just recenter everything to the position where the QR code is, first to the rotation, sorry about that, and then to the position. And when it's finished, we can start over by choosing our navigation target, for instance. And for that, I played around with quite a few possibilities how, uh, how I can choose the navigation target, like with a gesture or a UI, but I decided to stay as simple as possible. So I have QR codes on my smartphone, which I can scan and then set the navigation target based on the name. So if I scan a QR code, which consists of the word coffee machine, like written here, it will select the coffee machine object from the navigation targets and navigate to this point. That's basically the very simple indoor navigation. And just to show you the debugging possibilities, so you don't always have to deploy it to your VR glasses, I'll just start it over here. And as you can see when switching to the scene, the camera rig somewhere outside here. So I'll just drag it in, go to the indoor navigation, which is over here, and tell it to debug the navigation. And we can see that it will now aim for the debug navigation target, which is this one here, uh, which is farther away. And if I move it onto the If you move it onto the Nafnish surface, and I'll take the camera rig here, which is way too deep down over here. You can see that the camera rig is checking the navigation to our target. Um, make sure to not have too big of a height difference, because as soon as this moves too high, the path will not be visible here because it's not available anymore. It should be around two meters. So it's very easy for you to even test this kind of things in the Unity Editor, and then you can deploy it. So that's the very easy way to create uh, inter navigation on Quest 3 with, your, with a QR code. So if you like this video and want to support the channel, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, become a channel member, or use our newly established Patreon page to support the channel. Currently working on a few more use cases regarding more or less in the navigation. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.